Welcome back to Starting Six Podcast with Haley and Liv. Today we have a super exciting episode. This is something that um, I feel very passionate about that we have talked about a hundred thousand times yes. in the past couple of years. Um, and that is the importance of sports marketing in women's sports, specifically college volleyball. Yes. So super excited to get into that today. But first we have a couple housekeeping things. And I just want to tell everybody that Liv and I recorded Wednesday, <laughs> correct? Wednesday night. Yeah. And we're talking Nebraska and we're chit chatting, you know, whatever. And then Thursday, Nebraska sells out Memorial Stadium, which yeah. we'll get into. So I had to record a clip and stick it in there. Um, and then two days later, I get on my phone and Liv is in Mexico. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> you want to tell me what was up with that? Because I woke up, checked my Instagram feed, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Liv's at the airport. And then I check, find my friends a couple hours later. Oh, Liv's in Mexico. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's not a... I'm, that's a pretty typical um, characteristic of myself is to not tell people when I'm traveling because my dad's a pilot, so we just kind of get up and go. And so my sister is getting married at the end of the month, so it's been pretty stressful and a lot of stuff's been happening. So my dad took us, me, my sister, my mom, for a relaxing Mexico vacay weekend getaway, a little um, four-day trip. So yeah, it, it was very spontaneous, like I was telling Haley before. <laughs> It was like kind of planned a while ago, but like not really. We didn't actually know if we were going. And then like on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we actually found out we were going. So it was still kind of up in the air. And that's just kind of how I live my life. Just go with the flow. And that's what happens with vacations with my family. Just kind of random. So yeah, I was in Mexico. Got home yesterday at like 11.15 at night and then had to be up at work this morning. So Bear with me if so I'm funny. a little out of it. <laughs> I just like, it's just, I mean, to me, I, I was like, lives in Mexico. Like, yeah. she, you know, um, I just, it's so funny. I know your family is um, very much like that with um, traveling, but uh, it's just funny to me. I just was like, man, we recorded a podcast. We edited the podcast. I turned around, lives on the beach. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was just so funny. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm so, I'm glad you had a nice trip and that yeah. your sister got to relax a little because yeah, not that I would know, but I would imagine that it's very stressful to plan a wedding, um, especially the last month of it. So I'm glad she got to, and you got to spend some time with her too. Yeah. Um, nice. kind of one on one on one, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, Good yeah, time. I was very jealous. It was freezing cold here <laughs> in Wisconsin all weekend. Perfect weather down there. Literally miserable. <laughs> yeah. So that's great for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, well, that kind of leads me to the first housekeeping thing that I want to talk about today, um, and that is the NCAA Division One Women's Beach Volleyball Tournament Yay. taking place, um, which seems, you know, that you were just sitting on a beach. Not the same beach, but a beach. Um, <laughs> so I looked into this a little bit. I, I have had a hard time trying to stream games for beach. Um, I've made the effort to do so. It's quite the process, quite difficult. Mm -hmm. um, they also play it during the day obviously, yeah. um, which I work full-time job. So I am not watching beach volleyball during my job. I'd like oh, to yes, that you on are. record. It is. <laughs> no, it's on I'm your phone not. in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> it's too hard. If it was easier, maybe. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so unfortunately, I haven't got like super into watching it. Um, I, but I'm excited about this. So for those of you who don't know, the women's beach volleyball tournament takes place in the spring. Um, typically, you see a lot of Southern schools and West Coast schools um, that take this kind of as serious, if not more serious than their fall season, mm -hmm. um, their indoor seasons. Um, and you also see a lot of girls are crossed over. So they do both. They play indoor and they play beach. There are girls who only play beach. Um, so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of confusing at the same time. Um, so the... Um, selection show was on Sunday, April 30th. And then the bracket was released shortly after. So just a couple of things I want to mention, and we'll get too into it, but um, the tournament is taking place in Gulf Shores, Alabama. And for the first time ever, they have six, a 16 team bracket. So this is the largest bracket that they've had, um, which is super cool. And again, shows the growth of the game. 
um, even in a different form than the one we usually talk about, which is a big part of the conversation that we're going to be having today. So um, super cool to see that. Um, a lot of these teams, like I said, are on the West Coast or they're Southern, but um, one you know school I really wanted to mention is um, U.S. So UC is the third seed right now. They're the reigning champions from 2022. And they're like, when you're talking beach volleyball, you're talking USC and UCLA. Yeah. Like, yeah. like those are the two teams that are just always mentioned. Yeah. So UCLA is the number one seed. TCU is the number two seed. Oh. USC at three, Florida State at four, and LSU at five. So um, what's really unique about this, and, you know, this is kind of appropriate coming off of, you know, March Madness, um, and even with the indoor tournament, um, they're doing this in a single weekend. So... The first round of games is going to take place on Friday. The quarterfinals and semifinals are on Saturday. And then there'll be a champion crowned on Sunday. And that's it. That. So it's that. a full weekend. Um, and then I also thought it was cool. So ESPN, I'm not exactly sure. They didn't really specify which games specifically are going to be on ESPN's channel network. But yeah. each court is going to be individually streamed on the ESPN app. So not sure if that's regular ESPN app and everyone would have access to that or if that's ESPN plus it didn't specify yeah. um but I thought that was kind of cool that each court is going to be instead of just them taking a TV slot and having one yeah, yeah. so each team is going to be able to be watched friends yes. families fans so that's I thought awesome. that was pretty unique um I know that NCAA has an agreement with ESPN for stuff like this so it wasn't surprising that it's going to be on the ESPN app um but really cool to see that they're making the effort to do so um, it, I would assume, assuming nothing, I haven't read anything that the championship on Sunday probably be on the normal ESPN channel, yeah. but don't quote me. I haven't seen anything for sure. Hopefully it is. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something too, that it's, it's interesting to me that the college level of this doesn't get the same tension that the Olympics do because when the Summer Olympics are on, I see beach volleyball. And yeah. Everyone's talking beach volleyball. I mean, for the longest time, it was um, Team A Trainer and Carrie. I mean, it was yeah. just everyone was talking beach volleyball. Everyone was watching beach volleyball. Everybody, everybody loved men's beach volleyball. I mean, it was always a topic of conversation. So it's kind of yeah. interesting that that's never translated to college. Um, but clearly it's growing. Um, they're able to host bigger events. They have 16 teams. So I'm really excited to see, um, to tune in a little bit this weekend, or at least try to, and see what it kind of looks like, um, mm -hmm. what these teams look like. And I'm excited to see who wins. Cause, yeah. um, last, I mean, the current champion sitting at a number three seed. Yeah. So I'm interested, yeah. I'm interested to see what that, what that end up like ends up looking like. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. And I think it's a good marketing thing for them to do it the whole just stream it the whole weekend instead of spreading it out like various days throughout the week or like make it a two weekend thing because then you lose people's view like you you lose viewers because they're doing stuff and they're busy but for some reason I feel like just having it all condensed then people are more likely to watch more of the games once they're watching one of them they're gonna then sit there and watch yeah. another and another and another until the championship yeah, it's it's tough too. This time of year is hard. You have um, playoffs happening for the NHL. You have playoffs happening for the NBA. Baseball season's underway, so you have a lot of professional sports that are taking up these slots on TV and are taking up a lot of people's time and attention. So it's cool that, you, like you said, they're doing it in a weekend so that you could tune in and you could just have it on the computer next to you, or you could have it on your iPad or whatever, um, and you could just kind of keep watching, you know, that kind of a thing. So. Yeah. Um, definitely pros to it, but cool to see it getting this kind of exposure because mm -hmm. I don't know if it, it was just me not paying as much attention, but I don't remember in previous years or the past two, three years, seeing it at the forefront of, yeah. you know, my social media pages mm -hmm. and on NCAA and stuff like that. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's gotten a lot bigger the past few years. I would say, I think last year I started seeing it more often, but like you said, everything has always been focused on the Olympics and you've never talked about even those players that do play for the Olympics, like they're doing beach tournaments and qualifiers all the time. And like every once in a while, mm -hmm. see it on TV at a restaurant or something, but like that's never talked about either. Like these people are playing all the time 
but we only ever focus on beach volleyball when the Olympics come up. And it's like, this is actually yeah. happening all year round and just no one's talking about it. So why? And so it's nice that they're starting right. with the college level because then it will hopefully those players will move on to the professional level and then it'll just expand um, their views. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to tuning into a couple on the app, on the ESPN mm-hmm. app. And, um, you know, I'll just be, I mean, we're going to be in cold rainy Wisconsin and they're going to be playing on the beach in Alabama. So, you know, at least I get to see the, the ocean from the, <laughs> from the phone screen. Um, but no, I'm excited. I love beach volleyball. It's, mm-hmm. it's so difficult to play. So um, I think people underestimate how hard it yeah. is. Um, so it's really cool to see it. And I, I love, and I will always stand by this. I love seeing indoor players get the opportunity to play competitive beach because your game changes so much. You have to be so much smarter. You can't rely on your vertical. You can't rely on your arm swing. You have to be so smart and you have to communicate so clearly or you cannot succeed. So I think to see indoor players take beach seriously and be able to compete in it as other people and not just be playing for fun um, is super, in my opinion, crucial to growing your knowledge of the game instead of just relying on your heavy arm, your, mm-hmm. your vertical, you know, whatever, like you really yeah. have to see things differently. Yeah, I so, totally agree. I think beach is the best form of training you can ever get when playing indoor volleyball. And I'll stand by that till the day I die. It's, it's the best way to get better indoor and vice versa. Like it's, they're very good cross train when you do it right, but mm-hmm. some people don't. Well, speaking of outdoor volleyball, as I kind of mentioned a little bit, I had to put a clip in on Thursday. I put a mm-hmm. clip in of me on Thursday into the episode that was released last Sunday <laughs> that we recorded on Wednesday because we sat here and talked about Nebraska and talked about um, that they're anticipating like 4,000 tickets sold and maybe we'll be able to get a ticket. Maybe we'll take a little road nope. trip. No. <laughs> no. Nope. Sold it out. Sold it out. It's a big fat we sold out in 48 us. hours. <laughs> yeah. It... <laughs> I was like, oh. I had just so embarrassing. <laughs> I had just started editing it, and yeah, I, I as soon as I, I open my Instagram and I see the graphic you ended up using and that you made, yeah. and my jaw just hit the hit my work desk. I was like, <laughs> no way, they did it. They, they did. They did it. Um. 82,900 tickets sold to Memorial Stadium in August. Yeah. I can't even fathom how many people that is. Like, (laughs) so, okay. So if I'm correct, um, let me see if I can figure, get an exact number. Mm -hmm. Okay. So according to Google, yeah. Um, Lambeau Field holds okay. 81,441 people, and I'm pretty sure Lambeau is one of, if not the largest NFL stadium. So I've been than that. Yeah. So Memorial Stadium holds a little bit more than Lambeau Field does. So basically, they sold out like Lambeau Field. So <laughs> these they did what people do for. Packer games. Um, <laughs> let's see. The other stadium that came up, AT and T Stadium, um, eighty thousand people. So they're basically doing NFL teams do, which is I, insane. I'm so happy for them, but I like so still cannot crazy. fathom that happened in in such a short time. Like it's one thing for it to like sell out in like two weeks or something like that, or like a month. This happened in two days. Two days. We didn't even get to talk about road tripping there. We didn't even get to have a conversation. Look at the tickets. No, 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 me neither. They're gone. They're all gone. Um, So a couple of things I wanted to get your opinion on. So when big things like this happen, Mm -hmm. um, I immediately take to Twitter. Mm -hmm. And... I wanted to see what the people were saying. Um, the Instagram comments were very positive, um, but there were a couple of things on Twitter that I thought were interesting. Okay. So one person was like, 
how are you going to watch a volleyball match if you're in the very top of the stadium? Okay, yeah, that's true. And I want to get your opinion before I give mine. Okay. Because I've thought about this a lot. Yeah. That is... Okay, so I'm trying to think, like, you know, we've been to Lambo and we were on the the roof or whatever looking down at the field. So I'm kind of, like, picturing being up there looking down. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and like you can you can make out what's happening like the band was playing or whatever and you can't necessarily like fa- see faces but you can probably mm-hmm. figure out if you have decent eyesight what's going on and right. who's where it's not right. going to be obviously the same intensity factor that you would have if you're lower and have better visibil- visibility of the court um <clears throat> And I guess I don't know how they're going to have it set up. Like if there's, I mean, there's obviously the goalposts, which have screens on them or could be made into screens. So then I would think that they would be streaming or having the play-by-plays up on the screens for those people to watch. Right. And so, so like you could watch both. But I, I feel like it wouldn't be the same. And I still would probably just get the tickets to just to be in that atmosphere, you know. And I almost feel like those people aren't necessarily there to watch volleyball because it's not like a, the top school in the nation against the top school in the nation, you know. Like, no offense to Wichita State or the, who they're playing, but, like, it's not going to be the greatest competition ever. And so I, I – think that people are more going and getting those like nosebleed tickets for the environment and just the excitement as a whole and just to be a part of it not necessarily to watch the game if that makes sense yeah yes so I had thoughts along similar lines so understanding the court is smaller than a football field the size of the people are still the same yeah so when you're going to a Packer game, a Vikings game, Bears game, whatever, mm-hmm. and you're sitting in the nosebleeds, those, I mean, keeping in mind, these women are not, maybe not as thick, but as tall oh, as these NFL yeah. players, if not tall. I mean, you're talking like these girls are like 6'5". Yeah. And the ball is bigger than a football. Yeah. You know, yeah. These are the things I'm thinking about. The size of the people doesn't change, no matter what sport True. it is. Yes. However, understanding the court is mm-hmm. smaller. Mm-hmm. No matter if you're, I mean, I'm going to Taylor Swift in a month in Soldier Field. I'm in the nosebleeds. Yeah. And you think I'm not going to be able to see what's going on? They have screens everywhere. Yeah. I mean, people, are, people aren't going to watch volleyball up close. Another mm-hmm. thing I want to mention, because I agree, I think they're going to be a part of it. Yeah. Period. They're, they're literally a part of history. And to mm-hmm. people in Nebraska, that's, volleyball is a huge deal. Yeah. So what I wanted to mention was, um, Devaney Center, which mm-hmm. they call the Bob, where Nebraska plays um, their indoor home games. So that has a capacity of 13,000 people. And there's people who buy tickets and stand in the rafters at those games. <laughs> like their heads are literally like this far from the ceiling. Yeah. It's standing room. They don't yeah. have a seat to watch. Mm-hmm. And I can guarantee their view, not that great, you know? No. So. Yeah. So keeping that, like, I, I thought that some people were being so annoying about it because I was I, like, I wasn't going to Packer games to sit and try to look at Aaron Rodgers' face. Like, I can't see him <laughs> yeah. from where I'm sitting. The point. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It was just yeah. kind of like, uh, um, some mm-hmm. people, again, these are probably people who didn't try to get tickets. Exactly. But yeah. um, I, that was the, probably the um, one thing I saw the most was the seating. Um, how is that going to work? Um, I'm sure they'll have plenty of screens, yeah. plenty of playback. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to hear everything. I'm sure yeah. the speakers will be going. There'll mm-hmm. be plenty of lights. Like I'm, I'm yeah. sure that like the, and the Nebraska athletic staff would not have taken this on if they weren't going to make it viewable to exactly. people on TV. Yeah. Like I'm sure these things will be taken care of. Mm-hmm. Yes. Would you rather be sitting courtside? Uh, yeah. duh. Um, but that's not the case. If they're yeah. going to sell out and there's other people who want closer tickets and you got stuck with the nosebleeds, mm-hmm. that's the way it goes. Yeah. But I don't, I really don't think it's going to be as difficult as people are making it out to be. I don't think so. I don't think so either. I'm, I am interested. 
go ahead. Look, oh, I was just going to say, like you were saying before, like people go and are in the nosebleeds for football. It's the same exact thing. Like when you're in the nosebleeds, you're not really actually paying attention. You're most likely probably just drinking at that point. So like you're not even watching the game anyways. So I think it'll be fine. Like you said, they're not going to put on this production if they can't make it work. And if they haven't thought through all of this and they wouldn't have sold out and allowed all of those seats to be available if they knew that people weren't going to be able to see at the way top. So I don't think they'll have. Right. Yeah. That's how, it. yeah, that's how I felt too. I, I think it, people are getting like the people, this is not a lot of people. I shouldn't, I mean, these are just a couple of tw- tweets I saw when yeah. I was snooping through, but um, yeah, this, it's definitely going to be interesting. I'm excited to see how creative they're able to get with it um, yeah. in terms of the, you know, the um, way it's going to look on television, mm-hmm. um, the way it's going to look in the stadium. Like, I'm interested to see how creative they are with that space. Yeah. Um, but they released a bunch of photos of the team on the field yeah. in their <laughs> volleyball so cool. stuff. Um, it, 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 like, brings a smile to my face because – it truly looks like volleyball is being like, this is our place now. Yeah. (laughs) It it was so cool to see Mm girls. Like you could just tell how empowered they felt to be like, we're going to play in here. Yeah. And we sold it out. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's really, it's, I can't even imagine how this feels for those girls. I couldn't imagine playing. Like, I'm just thinking now, like, okay, you're on an indoor court. Everything is indoor, but you're not indoor you're outside and like just mm-hmm. wondering how that's going to affect the actual game of it like you know you're gonna have when you're gonna have I don't they're playing at night so they would have not like sunlight to have to worry about but there's when there's environmental factors and how the humidity mm-hmm. and stuff like that how is that going to affect the court and how s- slippery the court is I mean we've experienced that just mm-hmm. within a gym like how is that going to change and then how are like I'm just thinking the the noise in that stadium, like the roars of people screaming would just like, I feel like overcome me. Like that would be insane yeah. to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, I found an article. Um, okay, so... The um, Just Women's Sports is the Mm -hmm. article that I'm getting this from. Um, So, okay, so the record for a women's sporting event, this is all just in general, no, Mm -hmm. not at the college level, just in general. So the record is from the 1999 Women's World Cup when 90,185 fans attended the final between the U.S. women's national team and China. Wow. So that's the, the record for overall sports in the United States mm-hmm. um, for women. Mm-hmm. Um, Barcelona set the global women's attendance record last year with 91,550 wow. attending a Champions League quarterfinal match against the Real Madrid at Camp Nou. I'm probably butchering that, but... <laughs> Um, when you're taking into consideration, these are professional soccer teams, keeping that in mind (laughs) that are holding these records and you have college volleyball behind by less than 10,000 people. Crazy. That is insane. (laughs) Like it's crazy to think about. It like blows my mind. And then when you read it like this, so, um, we've talked about this before. So Wisconsin holds the regular season NCAA volleyball attendance record of 16,833 fans last year against Florida in the Kohl Center. The NCAA tournament, or I'm sorry, championship game Mm -hmm. when Nebraska played Wisconsin has the postseason record with Mm 18,755. So those were, when Wisconsin and Florida broke the regular season record, that was insane. It was everywhere. Everyone was talking about it. It was Mm -hmm. insane. So that you're talking around 17,000 people. This is talking 